I began this kind of woodworking five and a half years ago or so. I had just come back from teaching in China. I moved to Southwest Virginia in the Roanoke area with my wife. And for a while I worked on her parents' farm. I found that her dad has a bunch of these old tools that were his dad's and his dad's dad's. And I learned how to use them and just fell in love with these old tools. My name is Canlin Frost and I'm a traditional furniture maker with Canlin Handcrafted. For me, this craft is, is very intimate. It's, it's very personal. When you work with wood on a one-to-one -one basis and you're touching it and you can feel its, its coarseness or its smoothness, you can feel an edge and see how square it is. You can feel the, the grain and, and you can instantly tell if it's, if it's fighting you or going with you. The wood will talk to you. It's part of that relationship. It's a very intimate relationship. When you cut down a tree, you, you take its life. And when you pick up boards from that tree, they tell you about it. I can tell you how it grew, and I can tell you how big it was, and, and how old it was, um, where it came from. That tree can't tell a machine anything. And I can begin to understand, after studying the wood, what its future life is supposed to be. It was a tree, and, and it served a, a purpose. And that's not its end. It needs to continue on. It needs to continue a legacy that honors it. What I do here isn't really about furniture. It's about a connection. It's about a person who buys one of these pieces and looks at it and says, wow, that's quality that was made by human hands in a modern time. And it's also about teaching that and passing that along to the next generation. I really aim to practice sustainable craftsmanship in what I do. Our generation is beginning to do something about a problem that should have been addressed a century or more ago, really. We got so excited as a culture about creating things quickly and, and making more and more and bigger and bigger that we didn't stop and think whether or not we should. There are trees that are extinct. You can't even buy the wood for it anymore. They're gone. These were things that our previous generations, they took for granted. Now more than ever, we have a responsibility to preserve these things for our own survival, our, our own culture. We can't lose these things because there's nothing that will take its place fast enough. I think what's going to happen is people are going to start to see the value in their mothers and grandmothers' dish sets, and they're going to see value in the old dresser that came out of their great uncle's house or something. I'm encouraged by the fact that there are groups of people who woodworking and furniture making is kind of a hobby or an interest. They like the idea of going back to these roots of using hand tools to make furniture. Gandhi had a quote that was more eloquent than I'll put it, but he essentially said that if we lose the ability to work with our hands, then we lose a real spiritual gift. It's about what is the next person behind me going to get out of it? What can I create that speaks to them and inspires them to do something bigger and better than, uh, than any computer can? And, and it's, it's something from, from themselves. It's your God-given brain, it's your soul. And when you put yourself into those things, all new possibilities are opened up. And if I can inspire other people to, to take that journey and take it in whatever direction they want to go with it, then, uh, then, then I feel like what, what I've done here is a success.